canvas banner. As you know, as you can see, I decided instead of making vertical stripes, I'm using the stripe template or stencil and turned it so that my stripes are now going to be diagonal. And for this one, I'm going to ink it up with the summer star fruit color. And so this just goes to show you that, oh, that's a beautiful color. It just goes to show you that, you know, your stencils, you can use them in many different ways. It doesn't have to be just the standard, uh, you know, up and down stripe that you may, that you see in the catalog photos. Uh, stamp it your way. Uh, turn the stripes completely horizontal and make horizontal stripes. Um, you could even do the same thing with the chevron. Turn that in another direction. Make your zigzags going uh, this direction instead of the up and down like you saw me do with the other um, canvas. But once again, I just wanted to show you this sample so that you can see the versatility that you have with the stencils that comes with this kit. So I'm going to slide my stencil up, line up my lines, put my tape back down. And then continue inking. Okay, now here real quick I wanted to uh, demonstrate to you um, how I determined the angle of my diagonal stripes. I already have the one canvas completed and since I'm going to be doing two of these on my banner I wanted to have the other stripes going the opposite direction so that they're kind of like this. And of course they'll be separated by another canvas with vertical stripes but still I wanted these to have, I didn't want my one angle going like this on my diagonal and then the other angle going, it, it would look goofy. So I wanted them to be perfectly aligned um, on my two pieces of canvas. So in order to do that, once I had the one finished, I got it the way I wanted it and I liked it. Then I started to set up my tensile for my second piece of canvas. And what I did was I took my finished canvas and lined it up right up next to my second canvas. So at the top, they are perfectly even horizontally and you know, they, they just line up right next to each other. And when they, and then I shifted my stencil, turned it a little bit this way, a little bit that way, a little bit up, you know, wiggled it around until my summer star fruit stripes basically formed chevrons because they go up and then on this portion of my stencil, they would meet. Do you see that? So I know that by doing that, that's going to ensure that my diagonals are perfectly the right angle. It, this, you know, very symmetric, very um, not symmetrical, but the angle is exactly the same on both pieces, only the opposite direction. And that way, it'll look. It won't look off balance or crooked or weird on my wall. Now, it really doesn't matter. If it doesn't matter that much to you, don't worry about it. Stamp it your way. But for me, that would bug me. I wanted to make sure that my angles were right and if you're like me this is I wanted to demonstrate this for you so that you can see how I got my angle of all my stripes to line up. Okay, now for this step I'm going to show you how I made the additional rosettes that I placed on my banner. Remember with the basic uh, Halloween Simply Created kit you get uh, four of the pre-scored rosette strips, two in each color. And since I'm spelling out spooky and I wanted to have a rosette on every pennant that required six rosettes and the kit gave me two. So what I did before I created these rosettes, I measured those strips and determined that those strips, you can see this here, they measure 15 and 7 eighths inches long, two inches wide, and they're scored at every five sixteenths of an inch. Well, this can be done. However, I thought, why not simplify it? It's easier to look at the bigger uh, lines on the scoring boards and scoring and the cutting board. So I figured, let's instead just round up that eighth of an inch and make it sixteen 
inches long, still two inches wide, and score instead at every quarter inch. And this quarter inch, uh, since there's four quarters in an inch, you should get a even amount of score lines uh, for the 16 inches in length. So that's what I'm going to show you now. So right now I'm using the um, a piece of uh, from the designer the Witches Brew Designer Series paper pack, super cute stripes, and I'm going to line this up at the two inch line on my cutting board and I have it lined up with the line all the way going down there, these vertical lines and I'm going to cut that so I have my two inch strip now because the paper pack the designer series paper pack um, is 12 by 12 inches you can't get 16 inches in length for your strips so instead you want to take cut these two strips of eight of two inches wide, the two inch wide strips, cut them down to eight inches. Okay, now to score our strips, um, I zoomed in here close so you can hopefully have a little bit, you can see a little bit better, but the very first line to the left of your cutting track is your quarter inch line on your cutter. So I'm gonna line up my strip right with that very first line hold that in place and then score it using the scoring blade the light gray is the scoring blade okay then I would just slide my paper down to the next every square is a quarter of an inch so basically slide it down to the next line or one square over on your cutting board and then score that and I'll do it one more time so now I'm going to slide down one more quarter or one more square on the board whoops make sure I'm right up against these you want to make sure your paper is running right along these guides too mine just slipped a little so I wanted to make sure it was nice and straight so you would continue scoring all the way down for both your strips Okay, so now that I have um, two of these eight inch long strips um, scored and folded, now basically I need to put two of these together to get the full 16 inches in length so that it's just like the rosettes that come in the kit. And I already have some sticky strip on here, so I'm just going to show you real quick once again lining up my mountains and my valleys see now I have it now it's continued on so now we're going to join the final end together just like we did on the other rosettes line that up and see now we can just put it together squeeze it to squeeze it nice tight so your circle inside in the middle gets nice and small Once again add some hot glue around that center circle place your one inch circle punch in the middle in the last rosettes I only showed you that I put the circles on the one side but you really need to do it on both and since this is the top of my rosette, whatever embellishment I put on, like those um, die cuts that come with the kit, for example, they would adhere then right on top of that black circle. So I'm going to flip this over and quickly do the back side as well. So there, now we have a rosette, same size and shape as the ones that come with the kit. So here I have my uh, samples of my three different varieties of rosettes. I have six total, but here's uh, three showing the different color patterns. This first one I 
used the die cut that came with the Simply Created Halloween kit and I adhered that to a piece of basic gray, excuse me, basic black cardstock using the two and three eighths scallop circle punch. I punched that out, adhered them together, and then popped it up on my rosette using a dimensional. And the second one here, again, using the die cut from the kit, and then scallop circle punch again, the same punch, and this time I used um, this particular uh, Patterned paper from the witch. This is uh, from the Witch's Brew Designer Series paper pack, and um, again, pop that up on dimensionals. And for the third one, I used uh, this paper, and I basically lined up. This is the label uh, bracket punch, and I lined up one of the spiders inside this punch. Punched it out. Uh, two of them, one for each of my rosettes that look the same, and uh, pop that up on, adhered that to the uh, another scallop circle punch. This time I used uh, the flip side of this paper. This is the side I used for the middle one, and then here's the other side of the paper, and I only went in the corners because, as you can see, this particular sheet has this great big design that I have other plans for, and I didn't want to, um, you know, hurt that design at all so I just punched in the corners and then like I said popped them up on dim dimensionals and all done. I'm going to show how do I, I made this orange pennant now that goes over this canvas pennant. I cut a piece of pumpkin pie cardstock that measures three inches wide by six and a half inches long and on my paper cutter I'm going to line up the cardstock the left side with at the one and a half inch line. Get that straight. Since it's three inches wide, half of three inches is one and a half. So by lining up the left side at one and a half, the center, I'm finding my, that's how I find the center point of uh, my cardstock. And that's going to put the uh, center right on the cutting track. So then I'm going to start to cut up from the bottom, and I want to cut one inch. And on this uh, cutting blade cover, I guess you call it, there's a ruler on it as well. And so at the bottom of mine, it, it's my bottom of my paper is lined up right at the six and a half inch line. So I just need to cut up to the five and a half. And by doing that, now I've got a one inch cut right at the center. So I just take a pair of my scissors and from the very bottom right corner, Right at that point, I'm just going to cut straight up until I meet my center cut line. And then do the same thing on the other side. And that's how I have, that's how I made the cut into my bottom of my pennant.